All right, so how has Apex been treating you? How are you feeling ever since you replaced Overwatch in your life? Well, let's just say leaving Overwatch to, you know, to play another FPS game is a decision that you don't take lightly, especially as a content creator. But I suppose I would uh, compare it to um, World of Warcraft. When I left that to play Overwatch, there was a different feeling to what I'm experiencing now. And what I mean by that is when I left World of Warcraft, very sad and nostalgic and lots of love for the game and the lore. And they've been playing it a lot longer, obviously. But um, yeah, with, with Apex, uh, it felt like a huge relief, which I, <laughs> I've... Uh, yeah, I didn't realize how big the relief was until more time had passed. Because, you know, the the old thing, people keep saying, hey, just take a break and see how you feel in a week or two oh, weeks yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. and then and come back. But, man, I just felt um, psychologically more balanced from leaving that game. And I think that's because, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. We talked about it even, you know, like off videos, you and I have had many conversations about it. But... I think one of the things that I hadn't really thought about was that Overwatch was making me doubt myself more in competitive. You know, like, blame was everywhere, at every mm -hmm. turn, in every game. And it's such a complicated game as well. I don't think people realize how complicated Overwatch is. But everyone's got the perfect solution based on what they know about it with what they've played. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think getting more confidence back um, was was one of the first things that happened as well. because. You, you know, everyone's a professional, everyone's an expert at Overwatch. It's very clear-cut in Apex, I feel. It's like, if you die, chances are you screwed up. If you win, chances are you did really well. In Overwatch, there's a lot of grace. You know, it's like, well, could my team have helped me there? Could I have done something better? Nah, it's probably my team. And there's a lot of that going on. People blaming each other. Obviously, the perspective of a DPS is not the perspective of a healer, or a tank for that matter. And then yeah, a lot of absolutely. Discussion. Yeah, completely. And, you know, Overwatch... Very frustrating game to play. But mm. Apex Legends can also be extremely frustrating as well. You got oh, yeah. um, early deaths, um, hackers, you yeah, get your teammates, uh, fucking potatoes, you know, they're, you, I've, I'm level 110 in the battle pass and max level on the, in the game because it's all I've played. And I still get matched with level fours and level eights and, you know, and they're useless. But none of it comes even half as close to the frustration that Overwatch brought. And is time a factor uh, to my thinking? I, very likely, because, you know, Overwatch, three years. Apex Legends, what, a month, two months? Mm -hmm. um, but Apex Legends, it doesn't have as many variables as Overwatch, you know? And with Apex Legends, it's get good, scrub, click forehead, and mechanical <laughs> skill you, you can yep. actually carry. Uh, and I say this as someone who's, you know me, I'm not, I'm not some friggin', I wasn't a Tracer, Sombra, you know, Soldier, Genji, DPS main. I was a tank main, and yet I still find it odd that I would enjoy high skill ceiling games more than I do um, Overwatch because they just fundamentally work better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, one thing I often read in the comments section, uh, especially when I talked about me returning to Overwatch, a lot of people commented, ever since I quit Overwatch, I've been far less angry. Like, Overwatch, I've my, made that argument a lot of times. Overwatch brings out the worst in people, and some people anyway, where the way the game was designed, uh, it really aggravates you if things go wrong, because it gives you this like false positive feedback loop of making you feel like you're doing everything right, and that's where all this discussion happens. So, would you say that when you went from Overwatch to Apex, that some of your aggression towards gaming period kind of went away? Um... Well, like I said, there's a lot of variables in, in Overwatch that just people do not take into account for. So that obviously breeds toxicity mm -hmm. and, you know, and anger um, during the game from everybody. And I, I think that is part of something I've said before is that everyone's playing Overwatch from different backgrounds. It's not like typical FPS games that just attract your COD boys and your CSGO and all the rest of it. You got your role players and you got your RTS gamers and you've got just so many, you know, different types of players and people in there. And yeah, I, I think toxicity is a word that's thrown out The you know, that sometimes it's, it's genuine. People are just being absolute motherfuckers, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the voice chat and all the rest of it. But I think it's easy to get angry at individuals and, and make it very black and white. You're an arsehole. 
because you're talking like that. You're an arsehole because you're one tricking and you're not talking and you're not in voice and you're not, you know, it's very easy to, to do a lot of that. And I find that my my black and white thinking has kind of gone away since leaving the game, if that makes any sense, because there's less, uh, there's just less blame to toss around. And, and yeah, again, that whole thing of um, when you walk into a, into a game, you know, you, you queue up, you are stuck in it if you're playing competitive. You know, I, th- I think this is this is what it comes down to, right? So if if you think of it on a on a fundamental level, um, a lot of people want to play Overwatch for the ranked mode. So for me, quick quick play is fun, but it's not immersive. But you can get out at any time, and there's elements of it that, that feel so casual. You know, you could say just play quick play, and you'll never have to feel the sting of comp. That's fine, but if you play quick play enough, it kind of for me, it makes me hunger for you know the organization of competitive, and then screwing around on four v four and the other arcade mods is fun. But I don't honestly think I would load the game up again just for that. So everything is driven towards comp, which is like this. Um, it's like a some kind of allure to esports, and it's not. It doesn't work anything like the the pro scene does. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a complete mess. You watch Overwatch League, and then you come and play the game, and there's more frustration for you because that's not what you get. You know, you watch it and then you play it. It's not the same game. Kalki tweeted out about that. He said, anyone else have a really bad urge to want to play Overwatch after watching the league when there was like a really hype game between, I think, Vancouver and somebody else? And then he was like, but be disappointed 15 minutes later. And that tweet got like thousands of likes as far as I remember. So that's the sentiment that a lot of people seem to share. Yeah, and and I think... I suppose the other thing is, I, I, if I if I wanted to come back, it would be it's not going to happen, by the way. But um, I, I want a rank mode that doesn't leave me at opposite ends of a pendulum, which is probably what you're you're getting at in terms of you know anger being deflated and just relatively more balanced mentally. Because one end of that pendulum in Overwatch is complete and utter euphoria, where uh, well, let's face it, that that pendulum ball thing is n- rarely swings up there. But when it does, it is the best feeling in the world because you realize how much Overwatch has got to offer. The best games I've ever played in my life have been in Overwatch, and I don't think anything has ever come that close. But then it's the other end. It's the other end that people worry about. It's that that pendulum ball swings to the other end. It's like it's a bog full of shite, and and that ball thing gets stuck there in stasis um, and all the globule shit and. That is the place where frustration builds, um, where you have uncharitable thoughts about your team, and they're having uncharitable thoughts about you, and um, people are giving up so easily because the others, you know, maybe they didn't listen to a battle plan, let's go underneath the Numbani, or let's go around the back left, or whatever it is. And another good example is, um, <clears throat> you know, if you, like, lose a round, or you lose a point really quickly, and people give up. Oh, and yeah. honestly, that is the most sickening thing for me so one of the ones i experienced most was on junkertown it's always um i think the the first point if you are defending that and you you get a kind of a a semi attempt at a stall doesn't work the the attacking team bulldoze through and then you're defending the rest of them you know you, you all get staggered or whatever and then the second point you, they just walk through uncontested that is enough for many people just to say fuck this game fuck you guys I was healing you, but since you can't group up, I'm not going to bother. I'm swapping to Widow. You know, it's like... Yeah, happens I mean, all the time. Yeah, yeah, so that level of frustration that, that is basically because someone throws their toys at the prime and they've just had enough of your team. They've had enough of your team because of a simple attempt at a stall. The stall didn't happen. You tried to contest the first point. It failed. So people get emotional. And that emotion just runs too high for me. And I think that's one of the things that, that people notice if they they leave a game like that all these variables and all the reasons that you know you fail team fights or something goes wrong or someone swaps a hero at the wrong moment or whatever uh yeah all of that just kind of gets simplified so when you when you ask me about you know hammer finding apex legends it's great i love it because <laughs> you just don't have all the complexity and all the potential issues that, that come from a game like that we've had a similar experience the other week i want to say where we played uh, competitively on Voskaya, where we were in defense first and we got completely rolled. Nobody except for, I think, Birdie uh, thought about p- picking a stall hero, so we got roll on both points. Huge time bank for the enemies. They got the ultimates off the first fight because it wasn't as much of a roll there, and they it was long enough for them to get the ultimates. So everyone, as soon as it was, it was our attack round, just stopped talking. 
Nobody wanted to communicate anymore. Like, all right, this game is over. And it took us a lot of effort to get an even better time bank than the enemies. But to, like, reinvigorate our team. Be like, all right, everyone's talking again. We're on the same page. And we won that game eventually. But then you got to realize, on our team, there were three people on Smurf accounts. Birdie, Nate, and I, mm-hmm. we were not meant to play in Diamond. It took three Smurfs to absolutely roll the enemies to reinvigorate the other three players who, after the first defense round, had already given up. So, I mean, it's often also a, a situation of, it's not your fault. It's more this, like, collective experience of players. We're like, all right, seven out of ten times, when this happens, I don't win the game. So, thus, I'm not going to try. And that's like a defense mechanism of, if I don't try as hard, I have this excuse in my mind where I don't have to feel bad about that game. And again, it's like it's not about you. It's not about your team. It's just like trying to make sure they don't tilt out of their skin just because of another loss in Overwatch. So that's like this huge psychological factor of technically a game is always winnable, but is it really? That's what people always ask themselves. Yeah, man. And that's absolutely correct. Another thing people do is they will give themselves another get out, which is they will say that it's a waste of energy to oh, put yeah. any more into it. And they don't want to expend energy on a lost cause. I've heard that so many times, a bunch of pathetic losers talking like that. Yeah. Um, because it, the, and they also laugh and, and chastise people who are positive and say, right, guys, it's not over yet. They did it with five minutes left. We can do it with five minutes left. And you get games where people are like, shut your mouth. You know what? Don't talk like that. It's over. Next game, GG or whatever it is. You think, fuck me. Is that how bad this game has become where you don't, you know, you don't mind. Obviously, you don't want to get rolled. But you don't actually mind it as much until someone actually says GG next game. Um, uh, that actually just drives me to not want to play at all. Like, it's actually the reaction to being rolled quickly that for me is worse than the event itself. Obviously, it feels bad. But yeah, the players have just become so intolerant of what didn't work. Um, but again, I think time is probably a, a part of that as well. Not not just that, but also the the devs and their um, their lack of communication and the, the the rebalancing and the choices with with heroes and the sustain that they now have in the game. I think is disgusting. There's a lot of things that build frustration, which is why I keep using the word variables because there's so many. There are just so many, and it gets to the point where. Some are never affected by it. They they just they cannot be tilted. No one saying anything or you know um, or doing anything will will take them off their game, and they don't understand what the problem is. Um, and then you get others that that are affected, like me. I just you know um, I find that it's like cancer. It's just pure infectious shit, and someone's negativity can bring everyone down. Uh, yeah, so I, th- I think everyone is experiencing different levels of frustration some unaffected some very very high but i think uh, if you look at pro players uh, top level streamers content creators leaving the game that's a loud and clear message that something is wrong mm-hmm. so game games last longer than overwatch and you know keep healthy communities i do think that one of the reasons why it's really difficult to create a good competitive experience for experienced players it's not because of their time played already like how many games have you played where after 1000 2000 hours you're still as excited about playing it as you were when you had not even 100 hours right and all the experience that build up creates a player base that quite frankly is jaded especially the high in rank you are most of the players in the high ranks are very experienced most of them played probably since launch or shortly after that and it's difficult to convince them that if they made this experience of, I lost 9 out of 10 times when this thing happened, to convince them, hey, we're not those other teams, we can make this happen. And when everyone's jaded in that way, it kind of just explains why new players have more fun in the game, because they don't have that negative experience. They just, they're just they just there to play the game, just there to learn a new thing. And they can see the game for what it is, rather than for what it was. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do on my channel, where when I took my break from Overwatch for this, I think... It was like a two or three month time period where I really didn't like playing Overwatch and I played it very rarely. And then there was this one or two month period where I haven't played it at all. I haven't even really thought about it much. And that's the time my channel was making more Division, Anthem, and uh, Apex content. And you haven't really seen any Overwatch on my channel simply because I didn't think about it. I wanted to take a break from it. And quite frankly, at that point, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to return. But once I did, I brought all these new perspectives from 
the developer updates I watched from The Division 2, from the dev posts I read about Apex, from the trouble I saw that the devs had with Anthem, and the community responses to that built this like entirely new perspective for me. And I realized what I've been doing on my channel for the longest time was, obviously I noticed that before, I was bringing up the same issues over and over again, because I and the core community thought them to be very important. Things like 222 enforcement is a huge discussion in the community. Um, role queue is a huge discussion. Matchmaking is a massive discussion that everyone seems to have an opinion on. And once I came back, I kind of just realized all these things have been discussed to death by me and my peers on YouTube. So why bother doing that? If right now I come back, I have this new fresh mindset, I'm having a lot of fun playing the game, why shouldn't I just express the fun that I'm having right now? And I started to have this perspective of, I want to judge Overwatch right now on what it is, rather than what it isn't, or what it was in the past. Because really, that's what it's about. We're complaining about Overwatch for what it isn't, for what the, the things that haven't been done, as opposed to praising it or even enjoying the things that are there. And again, I can see where all this frustration comes from from the experienced players, you and I included, obviously, for how long we've, we've been playing this game, and other players who made all these bad experiences. It's, different, it's difficult to like turn this off and have a fun time. But somehow I just managed to do that. And a lot of people said I've been like bouncing around with my opinions when quite frankly, I've just been complaining all the time and now I'm not really complaining that much anymore. And somehow that's considered bouncing around. I just think yeah. that if you grow as a person and you have different perspectives, your opinion can change. And right now yeah. I'm having fun. If I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't be talking about it like that. That's kind of just my spiel, but I can definitely see how for, for you specifically, we talked about making content for Overwatch, how it's difficult to come up with new ideas when the devs are not introducing anything new. So having a new, fresh game, I feel like as a content creator is probably very reinvigorating as well, isn't it? It is. I mean, look, what you're, what you're touching on there about, you know, having, having fun again, there's, there should be no guilt or, you know, like all those people who, um, you know, there's going to be complainers no matter what you do. So it's yeah. the same for me. If uh, the community reaction to throwing out negative remarks, uh, even for me, is hilarious. Um, I tweet out and I say, do you know what? This game's shite, you know? <laughs> and out come all the SJWs, people white knighting, tell me that I need to take a longer break. That I can't talk like that because uh, my views are subjective. And yeah, they are fucking subjective. But there comes a point where if enough people say that a game is shite, that is consensus. And a lot of people have arrived at that stage. And it's okay to say you think the game is a big pile of dog shit without having to qualify it and say, oh, this is just my opinion, me personally. It goes without saying that bashing a game without good reason is a dumb fucking thing to do. You do that and you're a complete loser. Um, bashing on what you love because uh, it refuses to change, that is a way of saying to others, you know what, I liked it, Activision or Blizzard or whatever, you, you both ruined it, I'm done. I'm not trying to ruin other people's fun, um, but I get asked, Where's the content? Where's my skins review? And you know, all that kind of thing. I have to be honest and just say what I'm thinking. And silent voices as an influencer is pointless. Not expressing your views when you've made pretty much exclusively Overwatch content since it came out, that'd be stupid. So does it get views for me to make a video and say something is absolutely fucking dog shit? Yeah, you, and you know it does, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not making any content about it because I'm happier without it. Um, yeah. And I came back recently just to try it for an hour or two, mainly just to see if I can stomach making a video or two, you know, on it. And I wouldn't have even reinstalled it if it wasn't for that, um, you know, if it wasn't for like a business decision. If it was a personal gaming choice, I wouldn't have bothered. Uh, but I still need to update people as I don't think, you know, me um, talking with you now is, is going to be sufficient because, but I'm, well, look, look I'm just going to tell them I'm telling you. The game's turned into a bag of shite because this competitive system is a million miles away from esports uh, ready. Uh, the PC culture, inclusion, diversity, bullshit, make everyone happy, particularly the forum whiners. I think that's wrecked the game in more ways than one. But if I could find some way to enjoy the game as you as you have, um, I would do that. And that's that's actually what I want. I want to be in that place where you, where you are still finding fun in it. Um, but I don't believe... The solutions that people come up with, like six stacking, is going to happen. It's a pain in the arse to organize. Oh, no. yeah. um, the Discord pugs, that's not going to happen either. Um, it's just not not what I want. But I think when when I come out and become extremely negative about a game, that is just you know, it's just it's an opinion and it's how I feel about the game. It's not bashing it because um, you know I, I want views for it or I, I want to hate something that's popular. Someone gave me that meme today on Twitter. <laughs> 
block that fucking idiot straight away. Nice. Um, it's nothing to do with that. It's just to do with I cannot find the fun in the game. I would love to find the fun in the game, but the pendulum swings too much the wrong way all the time. And if my break is long enough, maybe I'll come back in like three months. They actually do something with their game and, you know, uh, it, it miraculously changes into something that's fun for me. Oh, I can tell you something that is fun, though. When I came back um, for that one or two hours, hated it, hated every moment of it in terms of the comp, but okay. liked one aspect. Mechanically, I have got a lot better. <laughs> I, started play, I started playing Soldier and McCree, and I clicked heads like I have never clicked them before in my motherfucking life. Um, yeah, I was, I was pulling off things with McCree and Soldier I've never, ever done before, and that's because you have to be so self-reliant in Apex, mm -hmm. and that felt good, but it didn't feel good enough to to come back, but absolutely, man. Um, when I saw your last video that you made with the um, Overwatch is not that bad, and there was like a good six seven minute chunk of you just messing around and mm -hmm. genuinely enjoying it, and and that's some of the best viewing I've I've done on your channel. Just watching someone enjoy a game, I actually understand now why people would view a video. Uh, even if they're not playing the game themselves, because a lot of people have said that to me. They say, I still like your Overwatch content, but I don't play the fucking game. It's terrible. <laughs> it's like, well, why, why are you here? But it's because someone's having fun and you want to experience that fun, even if you have to live vicariously through Cliff Terrios having fun in the game. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. So that, that's what I've been doing. If I watch Overwatch content now on, on YouTube, it's because people are having fun doing it. And that's what I want. Because I can't get it in game, I'll just watch other people do it. The common misconception is that you can convince somebody to have fun, and I don't believe that's the case. It's not like me telling you how I have fun makes you have fun, because what happened with me is just a change in perspective. I looked at the game differently, I made experiences with other video games that did things well, that they did things poorly, and I just so happened to have fun in Overwatch again right now. I'm really enjoying learning new things, and I love learning Apex, but quite frankly, the game kind of bores me right now. I played like 200 hours of it, and Birdie and I, we've been grinding. Like, a month into the game's lifespan, we started enjoying it more and more, and we've been grinding the fuck out of it. And we've gotten pretty decent at it, but at the same time, it's like, it's just clicking heads. It's like, for us anyway. I know there's like more nuance uh, to people who like to strategize and take fights differently and try different weapons and that, but for us, it's like, all right, look for the weapons we always like to use, R31, Peacekeeper, uh, Longbow, whatever. Uh, find purple armor and start wrecking people, get those uh, high kill games. That's just kind of what we did, and eventually it just got boring. And for me, what I love about Overwatch is that it feels to me so fundamentally different depending on what hero I play, and I fucking love learning new things. Like, I would have never tried playing uh, the hamster, Hammond is his name, right? Uh, wrecking Ball, if I didn't watch Amang on, in the Overwatch League, just being an absolute chad and rolling over people, and suddenly I'm having a great time. I want to learn Genji because I've seen some Genji montage on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Genji the other day, and I'm just trying to practice that. And just, it all kind of comes together where I play these heroes, I try to do my best, and it just feels so good. It's just such a good feeling. But even me telling you that right now doesn't make you love the game if you just don't love the game right now. It just doesn't yeah, work like exactly. that. What, what, what you're describing right there is because the depth and complexity of Overwatch is so incredibly massive. It's like rabbit hole, you know, and, yeah, and definitely. getting to grips with every single hero. Um, even as the meta changes and the balances change, you know, there's just so much more to learn at all times. And watching the pros and the way they, they handle the heroes as well is just a huge motivator to get out there and do it. But with, um, with Apex... Uh, the way I see it is, I I create these stupid videos called the Apex Tales, where you like create a narrative. I love that these. Is, oh my god! That's how I've started to see the game. Uh, every time I load up a game, it's like a story. You know, uh -huh. here's me and my two potato fucking bot teammates, um, and I have to carry their dumbass all the way through this. <laughs> and as the ring gets closer, the the tension builds. So I start to, in my head, um, feel a story happening through Apex, and that is one of the things that has uh, grabbed me. Um, but with Overwatch, you know, um, if you take aside the community and, you know, well, pretty much that's it. If you take the community aside and, <laughs> <laughs> and the game is, I think, it is the perfect game. I think it's just the game is so incredibly difficult to play and it's too hard for the majority of people that play it uh, to be played well. And I know that sounds like a really harsh thing to say, but it is just too difficult for many people, the competitive side of it. So um, it makes sense that always having that thirst to learn coupled with always wanting to have fun 
and trying to find the fun in it should always yield uh, a positive result if you can not be affected by you know the community itself so yeah man it's good it's fun because you mentioned watching that video of mine while i was having fun and when i i mean i already watch your, your overwatch videos as well and i love your skin reviews in particular very creative um but when I start watching Apex videos, like you can just tell how much more fun you're having in that versus Overwatch. And I love watching that. And you play in the game in a way I would never play it. To me, Apex is just like kill machine, right? Like we're trying to go for high kill games. We're trying to go for those wins. And then I watch you having these like epic adventures narrated in epic voice and funny things happening. I'm just loving that type of content as well. But that's not a way I would ever play Apex. It's just my mindset. To me, it's just like a, a FPS where you just shoot people. And all these storylines don't really happen in my head. So it's just more fun watching it on your channel the way you describe you watch my video. Listen here, you fucker. If I could get high kill games like you, then I would definitely <laughs> make videos like that. <laughs> That's not what I was trying to say. <laughs> I mean, That's all right. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I guess we kind of said all we had to say about this. It's... Yep. Overwatch is a difficult game to love, but if you love it, you love it to bits. Just kind of how it goes. It's also a bag of shite. It's also a bag of shite, exactly. I mean, it's not like... The reason, for example, I don't stream the game is because, quite frankly, I have more fun not streaming it. You mentioned the community aspect of, like, if you can just zone out the bitching in the voice chat and stuff like that, you have more fun the game. And that same way, I don't enjoy streaming the game just to have my chat wait for me to do something stupid and I would type LOL W. I'm, like, it just, it's just not fun to me. I just rather play the game for myself, or play with my friends, and if something funny happens, something funny happens. Frustrating things still happen. It's not like I don't get pissed off when I get killed around the corner because of the netcode inconsistencies or whatever, but mm -hmm. in large, I can still walk away from the game at the end of the night and say I had a good time, and that's kind of all I'm looking for, to be honest. Any closing thoughts before we end this video? Honestly, I, I don't know what else to say about, about the game other than I, I think anyone who is in this love-hate relationship with Overwatch just needs to be careful of finalities with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just a dangerous thing to say, I'm done with this game for good, or I'm never coming back and all that, because if you have if you have ever been sucked in by it, like really heavily sucked in, I think there's always that chance that, you know, it, it can reignite, rekindle the passion. So I sit on the sidelines for now, waiting for that moment. But I'm not going to be, you know, watching it with with beady eyes or anything. I'm just going to every so often click on one of your videos, see what's going on. <laughs> Do you like that? I'm only going to watch your videos every so often. <laughs> like, what kind of a subscriber am I? You know, <laughs> that's good enough for me. I mean, I only no, upload every so often. No, it's fine, man. There's not that many Overwatch content creators left when you think about it. Not, yeah. not really that many. I think Stylosa came back. He he was making Apex, but I think he's back. You're Overwatch. Um, yeah, Nateson. I, I can't actually think of too many more. Blame the controller, maybe. But yeah, there's there's a lot of people that just don't do it anymore. A lot of streamers the... left as well. Yeah, man. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think Overwatch is is basically it, it has potential always, and I'm just gonna wait and see. All right. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Definitely appreciate you taking time out of your day, man. It's all right. Uh, obviously, everyone uh, should be subscribed to the channel if they're interested in Apex. And even if you don't like Apex, the videos are just so funny, even without the context of having played the game. I can highly recommend watching, especially Apex Tales. Great content over there. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to drop a like on your way if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you guys next time.